Backyard Brawl, Pittsburgh 38, West Virginia 31, Penn State 35, Purdue 31. Two great games last night. Boilermakers and Mountaineers lose gut-wrenching losses. And do we learn anything about what the Iowa Hawkeyes athletic director said when he spoke about future Big Ten expansion? And how did we do at Peek Around the Corner with our plays against the spread? All this on episode 30 of Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. Oh, man, Sean Clifford finally got it done for Penn State. He made that last drive down the field. They won the game. Before that, he overthrew his receiver by about 20 yards for an interception. Sean Clifford lives to play for another day as starting quarterback for Penn State. Purdue gave a better game than I thought they would. As you know, I have Purdue. I had Purdue losing that game by two or three touchdowns. But they play, you know, Aiden O'Connell is the best quarterback in the Big Ten West, and he proved it again last night. But Purdue just doesn't have that running game to finish off these close games. They just can't run the ball. Their, their running back, he ran it pretty good, but they just didn't give him the rock enough, I thought. But And they don't trust their running game late in these games, especially in Big Ten football. So they can't close out these close games. Uh, Charlie Jones, wow. I doubted him as being the number one receiver for Purdue, for him to be their number one target. Man, he played great last night. I don't know, how many times did they target him last night? 20 times? But he had 12 catches? I have no idea. Um, So he had a great game. But Penn State pulled it out. Um, Joey Porter Jr., he's going to be first team all Big Ten. He's going to be a first-round draft pick in the NFL. The cornerback for Penn State, Um, they didn't have him on Charlie Jones so much, though, last night. But uh, Penn State pulled it out, and you got to give, you got to tip your cap to Sean Clifford. I am his possible worst critic uh, on Twitter. So he told me to, you know, shut, to shut my mouth. He went, he won on, he went on to win that game. Big road game. First game of the season on the road in Big Ten, prime time. Penn State has often started their season on the road in the Big Ten, like for the last seven years or something like that. An incredibly bad streak of scheduling for the Penn State Nittley Lions being done in the Big Ten office. But Franklin got his win. Penn State pulled it out. And in the backyard brawl game, man, I feel bad for... I feel bad for the Mountaineer fans. They've got themselves a quarterback. JT JT Daniels played brilliant last night. He got rid of the ball. That Pittsburgh Panthers defensive line is legit, as we all know they are. Their secondary is still a little bit of a mess. But, you know, with the Mountaineers wide receivers dropping all those passes, Pittsburgh Panthers should have paid the penalty more on having a, a, a scattered secondary. But... Mountaineers just couldn't hang on to the ball. And it happened. Multiple receivers had multiple drops in that game. This this uh, Donaldson, this running back for the Mountaineers, what a beast. Why didn't Neil Brown give him the ball in their fourth and one, fourth and inches? They would have given him the ball. That would have been game, game over. I said, I predicted that, um, I predicted the Mountaineers to cover, and they did, the seven and a half. But I thought this was Neil Brown's time to shine, to finally break through that wall that West Virginia has been held under, that ceiling. You know, they just can't break through with that huge win over the last five, six years. And they had this game. They had it. Fourth in inches, they should have went for it. That would have salted away the game right there and then. Um. We we got what you know we saw Slovis. That's about what we thought he was going to do. A decent game, um, tough kid. Decent game. Mumfield, the transfer receiver from Akron, he is a player, and he's going to at least at least make up some of the Addison loss, the Pittsburgh when he went to USC. Um, 
Pittsburgh's running game. What happened? West Virginia just stopped them cold. Stopped them cold. Dante steals. What a beast. What a beat. Number 55, the Mountaineers. He's been there forever, and he's been making tackles there forever. Just a tough loss for West Virginia. They have to beat Virginia Tech at Blacksburg. They've got to go on the road. They've got to beat Virginia Tech. I think that's in a couple weeks. Or Neil Brown is going to be, he's going to be on the hot seat. Because that was his time to shine, and he didn't quite get it done. My Minnesota Golden Gophers won 38-0. Shout out New Mexico State. Did we learn anything from that game? Mm, not so much. We did, but, but we did learn one thing. And that is the bowling ball with razor blades. Mo Heisman, Mohammed Ibrahim, the great running back for the Golden Gophers. He is back. That Achilles tear... It's not stopping him. That he received in the injury last year against Ohio State when he ran for 163 yards in the middle of the third quarter and that had, had that Achilles tear. A lot of people doubted his return. Man, he looked quick. He looked great last night. Look out, Big Ten. Golden Gophers, 38-0. Let's check out my picks and how we did uh, so far. Peek around the corner. I was 2-1 and one in Week 0. And so far in Week 1, in my Grade A predictions, I'm 3-0. and oh. uh, West Virginia was plus 7.5, covered. Penn State, minus 3.5, covered. So I covered both of those by half a point. Whew. And Tennessee, I think they won by like 49. I love Tennessee this year. I love Tennessee. Um, and then the rest of those games, I believe, are tonight... Uh, I, I believe Illinois is playing tonight and on Saturday. So let's get to um, what everyone was talking about late last night in regards to what the Iowa athletic director said about potential. Let me get this up here real quick about the potential. It looked like he threw a bunch of cold water and potential further expansion of the Big Ten. Um, let's read it. Let's just read a little excerpt of this article in The Athletic by Scott Dockman, a great writer from Iowa. I'm just going to read this part here. Iowa City, Iowa. If Big Ten officials have eyes on expanding beyond USC and UCLA, they might need to work to build consensus among its current members and generate more revenue in the process. At the University of Iowa's monthly presidential committee on athletics meeting, Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta said it appears there is little interest in further expansion and there will be opposition if it means a revenue drop for membership. I feel like when we added the two, USC UCLA, that we added, it made sense. It had a lot of momentum behind it, Barta says Thursday. I've not yet heard anything that would get me at Iowa. I'm just speaking for Iowa, excited to say, let's continue to expand more. So I don't feel like it's a hot button. But if that's just one person, I won't speak for the conference. I think the uh, the, the important part here is there, there appears to be little interest in further expansion and there'll be opposition if it means a revenue drop for membership. So that part isn't really new in the sense that the numbers have to come in, right? When Kevin Warren, what, what do we know? We know the following. We know that a couple of days after UCLA and USC was added to the Big Ten, that the Big Ten targeted, were most interested in Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and of course, Notre Dame. We know that in the process, there's, there's been a, at least a preliminary process of the Big Ten speaking to lawyers and consultants with Oregon and Washington. Been reported by Brett McMurphy from Action Network. It's been reported, other people have confirmed it. We also believe that, Stan I peek around the corner, we also believe that Stanford's going to be going through the same process. So Big Ten is lining up their ducks, lining up, no pun intended, lining things up to where if the numbers come in from their potential new media partners, added on media partners, that they'll be ready to go to pull the trigger on expansion. I don't think the numbers have come in yet, right? 
I mean, I don't think the feeding frenzy, we, we talked about this yesterday and the day before and the day before, I don't think this feeding frenzy has come hot yet among potential new media companies. We haven't heard any reports of it. So Gary Barta of Iowa or any other athletic director wouldn't get excited about new expansion if they haven't seen the numbers, if they're, 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 if they're assured that they don't make less with the additions of a 17th and 18th school. So there isn't going to be any excitement. We do know, at least you can take this however you want, but peek around the corner, we do know that there's been discussions around Washington. We gave you that information, how they're easy to rally around by one Big Ten official. So there's obviously been discussions around Oregon and Washington and Stanford. That's what we believe. And Notre Dame, of course, right? That's what we know. We all know this. But the numbers haven't come in yet. The numbers haven't come in yet. And if they don't come in, and because remember, if you add a 17th and 18th school, let's say you add Washington and Oregon, those are two more slices of the revenue pie. So whatever package, whatever number you get from an Amazon or an Apple TV or, or even an ESPN, if they come through the back window and want to get a slice of the Big Ten pie this late in the game, whatever number that is, some of that money still would have to go to the current, the other 16, the current 14 schools in UCLA, USC, because they need that extra money to make up for what they lose in the extra pies of the 17th and 18th slices of the pie. So the numbers haven't come in yet. The shoe to drop, the peak around the corner, and I believe all of you should be paying attention to, the next shoe to drop is a report, probably from SBJ, Sports Business Journal, or from somewhere else, saying that Big Ten, has we has this is what's happening between them and Apple TV, Amazon, ESPN, Peacock. This is what Big Ten is receiving in, in a potential offer to for those companies to get more con Big Ten content. What is their offer? What is the money? Did it come in cold? Did it come in low? Is that number low? Then Big Ten won't expand. Did it come in enough to where Big Ten can expand? Okay, so that's what we're looking for, a report of how this, it, has Kevin Warren been able to create a feeding frenzy for additional Big Ten content? That's where we are today. Please hit the like button if you like this content. Please share the video and subscribe to our channel, Peek Around the Corner. It helps us so much with the algorithm. It helps us so much to get this, our content out there to the public. We appreciate you so much. We're going to be following this story, a possible further Big Ten expansion. We do not think the last chapter has been written at all. We know there is great interest in the Big Ten not to keep UCLA and USC on an island from 2024 to 2030. Leave that, let there be no doubts. There's lots of people in the Big Ten who does, do not want that to happen, and they do not expect that to happen. Until next time, from all of us at Peek Around the Corner to all of you, please, you all take care of each other. Thank you so very much.